You know that feeling when you just can't quite grasp a concept? I've been there. And I know a lot of you struggle with why we have superannuation and, and the rules around when we can and can't access it. It's like trying to read a book in a foreign language. And I've personally completed RG146 studies in superannuation, which in layman's terms means I've had the entire concept of retirement in Australia mapped out to me. So I've got a bit of an understanding what each aspect of super and age pension and savings and things like that is supposed to do. Instead of needing to go through a two-day course to work it all out, I'm going to share what I learned to provide a snapshot of what retirement really looks like for you and what a comfortable post-work life might be. The Retirement Income Plan is a concept crafted by the Australian Government's Productivity Commission. It's not a physical thing or a specific financial product, but a structure, a way to think about and organise the different components of your retirement income. Start by thinking of retirement as a three-legged stool. You've got your superannuation, your age pension, and your general savings. Each leg of this stool plays an important role in keeping your retirement steady and comfortable. The super, superannuation, is like your VIP pass to the good life in retirement. It's your money that your employer puts away for you for your golden years. Then there's the age pension, which is like the safety net provided by the Australian government. If you've reached a certain age and meet certain criteria, you're entitled to receive this regular payment. It's not designed to foot all your bills during retirement, but more on that later. And then lastly, there's your general savings, which is like your secret source for your comfortable retirement. These are your personal savings outside of your super and what you get for an age pension. The best part with this aspect of it, though, is that you're in control here. This might seem like a lot to take in because, yes, I've been in your shoes, but I want to help you navigate these concepts like a pro. If there's one thing you take away from this video, it's knowing when you can access your own money. You can access your super when you reach what's called your preservation age and retire. Your preservation age depends on what year you were born, but it's generally somewhere at the moment between age 55 and 60. For most of us, myself included, it will be age 60. Think of your super like money in the bank, but you're not allowed to use it until you've reached your preservation age. But there is good news. You can still control where it sits, as in where it's invested, until you can get hold of it. It's like a slow cooking pot. You put a bit of money in, let it simmer over the years. You've got yourself a delicious retirement fund that can fill you up. A whole lot of factors can spice up this fund, like the amount you contribute, the fund's investment returns, and even fees and charges. And it's helpful to take a look at your super once in a while, like the time you check the recipe while you cook. It's not about it becoming a financial whiz, but more about thinking of what's cooking, giving it a stir once in a while. Now, let's talk about the age pension. First of all, it's not a magical check that the government gives you to take care of all your retirement expenses. It's more like a dependable old friend who gives you a hand when you need it. The reality of the pension and the way it's intended to be used is that the government provides the age pension as a kind of income support for old Australians who need it. To be eligible, you've got to meet certain age and residency requirements. Currently, you can apply to receive an age pension at age 67. The payment you get, it does depend on your income, your assets, and your other circumstances. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not that you shouldn't count on the age pension at all, it's just that it shouldn't be your only plan for retirement. It's like the side dish to the main course of your retirement funding. It complements the plate, but isn't meant to be the star of the show. Then there's the third leg of our retirement stool, general savings. This is like your wild card, your secret stash, your breaking case of emergency fund. And this is where your personal financial habits come into play. Whether it's that cash you've been putting away in a savings account or investments in some stocks, bonds, property. And the great thing about general savings is that you're in the driver's seat. You control how much you save or you invest and and when you can use it. It's important to remember though, even though we have our super and possibly an age pension to support us, general savings can be a lifesaver. They can help you navigate the unexpected expenses or let you splurge on the world cruise that you've been dreaming about. From personal experience, building up general savings or something separate to your super can be really satisfying. And seeing that number grow over the years can give you a sense of security and safety and a lot of options when you retire. The earlier you start saving, the better off you'll be. Let's change gears a bit and talk about what is considered a comfortable retirement. But what does that mean exactly? Thankfully, the folks of the Association of Superannuation Funds of Australia, or ASFA, have got us covered. ASFA has this nifty retirement standard that helps define what a comfortable lifestyle looks like in retirement. So picture this, you're retired, you can go on a good range of leisure activities, travel, have a decent car, regular holidays, and even afford the little luxuries in life. And that's exactly what ASFA's definition of a 
comfortable retirement is. The latest figures from ASFA suggest a single person or an individual would need around $50,000 a year for a comfortable lifestyle, while a couple would need around $70,000 a year. Keep in mind those numbers aren't set in stone. They do get updated on a quarterly basis. They can fluctuate based on factors like your lifestyle, location, health, and so on. For many Australians, the retirement income will be a combination of super, age pension, and personal savings. One of the most daunting questions and one that I do see come up a lot is, can I afford to retire? Here's the practical approach. Take a look at your current savings, your super balance, and potential age pension. Now, go ahead and compare that with ASFA's comfortable retirement standard. It might not be the perfect calculation, but it can give you a ballpark figure of where you stand. Also know that many super funds offer retirement calculators where you can forecast your balance based off how many years away you are to retirement. These are pretty handy tools because they can take into account your current super balance, your contributions, your intended retirement age, and how much you might have when you retire. Some even factor in the age pension so you can determine what you get and when. But remember that while these calculators are a helpful guide, they can't exactly predict the future. Hopefully all this is starting to make sense, but I just want to talk a bit about something that does get me fired up, aiming for a self-funded retirement. You see, the super and age pension combined are great, but if you can fund your retirement without relying heavily on the government, you are winning. And that is my ultimate goal. We should be aiming to build ourselves a financial safety net for ourselves, striving for the independence and freedom that comes with being self-funded in retirement. I don't think retirement should be about finding ways to squeeze more out of the government and feeling like they owe you anything. It's about empowering ourselves to live comfortably on our own terms. So if the circumstances of the age pension ever change, then you're not affected. And the beauty of this is that it's all achievable. It does require some planning, dedication and discipline, but it's definitely within reach. Remember, planning for retirement isn't about achieving perfection or getting all the answers right away. It's about making informed decisions that suit your personal circumstances and goals. There's so many tools and resources available to help you along the way from your super funds retirement calculator, professional financial advice, use them to your advantage. The steps you take today, no matter how small, can make a massive difference in the long run. It's time to talk about something you'll hear a lot about but might not fully understand, pensions. If you're like many people, you might think you know what a pension is, but what if I told you they can mean multiple things? Seems confusing? Well, you're not alone. Today we're zoning in on pension accounts and the age pension. They might sound similar, but they are two different things. And understanding the difference could significantly impact the quality of your life in retirement. Let's dive in. When it comes to planning for your retirement, understanding your options is crucial. Yet many people I talk to are uncertain or a bit unsure about planning for retirement here in Australia. It's never too late or too early to plan and to get your information right. That's why I want to focus on unpacking pension accounts and the age pension. This is so we can find out why they're both important and also why they're not interchangeable. Let's start with the pension account. Now you might be familiar with superannuation, your good old super fund that you've been contributing to throughout your working life. Well, a pension account is an extension of that, also known as a retirement income stream because that's what it provides. It's a specific type of account you set up within your super fund to give you a regular income during retirement. It's not about taking out all your money as a lump sum the day you turn 60 and working out what to do with it. It's about turning your balance into a steady stream of cash, replacing your salary that you're retiring from. Here's where the numbers kick in. You can typically start one of these accounts when you reach your preservation age, which can vary between age 55 and 60 at the moment, depending on when you were born. In terms of the tax incentives to do this, a pension account often comes with a sweet deal. Once you hit 60, the income you draw from your pension account is usually tax-free. That's right, tax-free. So if you were to withdraw $4,000, you get $4,000. The government doesn't take any more cuts from that. It's also not just about what you earn, it's also about what you get to keep. The annual minimum withdrawal of a pension account is currently 4% of your account balance for those under 65, and the rate scales up as you age. So say you've got a pension account of $500,000, a 4% minimum withdrawal means you'll need to take out $20,000 in your first year. The remaining 96% sits there potentially invested in something that earns more than that 4% you've withdrawn, meaning you actually might never need a dip into your balance. But this, of course, is depending on things like inflation, etc. If you want this money to cover you for 20, 30 plus years, you want to make sure your investments can cover those withdrawals and inflation, or else you might look at running out. Also note that withdrawal rate scales up as you age, meaning you'll need to withdraw even more in your later years. 
The sooner you start looking at turning your standard super accumulation account into a pension account, the more options and flexibilities you'll have in retirement. Waiting until the last minute is like trying to do your Christmas shopping on Christmas Eve. You'll end up settling for what's left, not what's best. If you want to know more about setting up your retirement income stream through a pension account, I highly recommend you talk directly with your super fund. They should be able to provide you over the phone, limited advice with no additional cost as part of your membership. So look up that if you need support. Before we move on to the age pension, it'd be great if you could give me a thumbs up and even subscribe to let me know that you're enjoying this content and you want me to provide you more of it. Anyway, let's move on. What is an age pension? This is a regular payment that you get from the Australian government that kicks in when you meet a certain age and financial requirements. Firstly, you must be at least 67 years old to qualify. Then there are a few financial tests, including an income test and asset test. The things that are included in this assets test are things that you own like shares, super, general savings, cars, contents of your house, and anything else that you might own. The best thing though about this test is that your home is not included in it. So technically you can have a $10 million home, $450,000 in assets, and still receive a full age pension. Now, this isn't to say it's a loophole for the rich, but more of a point to say why owning a home in retirement in Australia is such an advantageous position to be in. If you have more than 450000 or so in assets, then the amount you receive as an age pension will start to reduce. If you're a couple that owns your own home, you can have assets for just over a million dollars before you're actually not eligible for the age pension. In terms of what you receive as a pension payment, the maximum base rate for a single person is just under $1,100 per fortnight. For couples, it's around $1,650 per fortnight combined. Now, that might cover your basic living costs if you're frugal, but Here's the thing, it's actually very close to the poverty line. The OECD estimates that the poverty line for a single adult in Australia is around $23,000 per year. And if you rely solely on the age pension, you're looking at an annual income of roughly $24,000. See how close that is? The point I'm trying to make here is that consider the age pension as your safety net. It's not a sole source of your retirement income. For me, I really think it's helpful for you to plan for both. Here's my tip no matter what life stage you are in. Start planning now. I've talked to folks who thought they would just wing it in retirement or didn't want to know and kept their heads in the sand. Most of them regretted not laying the groundwork earlier. A bit of planning today can make a massive difference down the line. Don't be the person who thinks they can sort it all out at 67. It's never too late to start, but earlier is better. Many think they're too young or too poor to start planning or that they need millions to retire comfortably. This isn't the case. And a simple bit of research and assessment of your financial status can really paint a solid picture. You're on the right track watching this video already. I've seen way too many people just accept their circumstances because they feel it's too late to change anything. Reality check, it's often not. You can take some control over your financial future. Give your super fund a call, get an understanding, and as you ponder your retirement plans, think about the age pension and the pension accounts. Understand them, plan for them, and then enjoy the rewards that come from being financially savvy.